Signori, bentornati sul canale con il nostro consueto appuntamento settimanale. E bentornati anche al secondo appuntamento della rubrica Il Salotto sul Crogiolo. Qui oggi ospite abbiamo una delle figure più importanti per quanto riguarda Keyforge, ovvero Christian T. Petersen, che niente di meno è che il CEO della Ghost Galaxy, la società che si sta occupando del rilancio del nostro amato gioco di mazzi unisce al mondo sul mercato. Mr. Petersen, it's a real pleasure to have you here as a guest. Thank you for recording me this interview. Uh, ciao Marco, very happy to be here, very happy to talk to everybody. Thanks for watching and listening. Come si svolgerà questa intervista? Leggerò prima delle domande in lingua italiana per poi esporle al nostro ospite in lingua inglese. Per chi guarderà questo video in inglese, per l'appunto, troverà come sempre i sottotitoli da attivare. How will this interview take place? I will first read the question in Italian and then expose them to Mr. Peterson in English. For those who watch this video in English, as always, they will find the subtitle to active. Is that okay for you, Mr. Peterson? Let's start with the first question, okay? Okay, go ahead. Signor Peterson, quali saranno i progetti futuri per la promozione di Keyforge? Quali novità ci aspetteranno al nostro rientro in fumetteria? Mr. Peterson, What are the plans for the future promotion of Keyforge? What new things will be awaiting for us once we are back in the stores? Well, we have lots and lots of plans, lots of hopes, uh, lots of aspirations for exciting things to do with Keyforge, of course. We, we are right now focusing, of course, on getting everything built and rebuilt better, hopefully, uh, than what it was before to make, be able to make the product. And uh, we're doing this... Uh, GameFound campaign to, to gauge to make sure that the fan base is still there, that which is not uh, something that we have hard data on, but hopefully that will give us a lot. Certainly uh, to this point, it's, it's very optimistic. Uh, the next step for us is to uh, really consider uh, how we're going to approach the international translations. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, including in Italy very much, um, there's lots of important constituents of the game that are international. We have to, we have to make a decision and uh, make some analysis on what can we do uh, in a realistic way uh, so we can we can support it over the long term uh, in those languages um we of course then will will also then start to become very very um focused on the organized play which is the tournaments uh, the events the the leagues the, the the reason to go out and play keyforge with other people uh and have fun uh, you know playing it so we want to help uh of course set that up and we're going to be uh, reaching out to different people around the world to organize some, I think, some very exciting, fun uh, events for the game. And then hopefully we'll get that in, into a routine. Uh, and then, you know, we have already started thinking about, you know, what's the next step, which of course is the next main big set for Keyforge. Uh, and so uh, I, I want to talk about, don't want to talk about it, those plans just yet, um, but because, you know, uh, um, the, may, may, many things could change. Uh, we are actually still going to be doing a small, Um, a retest of Winds of Exchange, which was basically almost done when we inherited from from Fantasy Flight Games. Um, but we are we're now reviewing everything, and uh, we're going back to to, to some of the playtesters and, and reviewing some of the decisions that were made to make sure that that if there's any any uh, any uh, you know any mistakes in this set, that there are mistakes uh, and, and that we can that we can defend them. So uh, that that's the kind of the immediate future. But but of course. Um, You know, Keyforge was a huge game. Uh, it was it was a it was a very well re received, a, a very exciting game, uh, and uh, you know we 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 would love to have that game return to that level of excitement again. That's not what we were expecting because you know trying to revive a game is is actually quite hard. Um, but I think over time, if we do a good job and uh, we make you know basically people's lives more fun while playing Keyforge, I think step by step, hopefully, we'll get there. Per il gioco, quali saranno i vari formati che continueranno ad esistere e quali verranno accantonati per magari fare spazio a nuove modalità? Which variant of play will keep existing and which one will be put aside maybe to make room for new ones? Ah. So the when we talk about Keyforge variants, we of course talk about the the, the kinds of games that, that that people play. There is a core type of play um when you play Keyforge which is a one versus one player we have the rules etc uh and then there is a whole great deal of of variations uh, to that that was introduced uh for various tournaments vault tours you know etc um it, it there 
everyone is going to have their own you know opinions about what is the most exciting you know variant that they like to play versus what somebody else likes to play um and we understand that um the one of the the kind of the fundamental parts of an organized play program in my opinion is the ability to have the the, the absolute maximum number of players come together and all understand um what game they're playing uh, the, the the problem that you have with a game like Keyforge, you need to find opponents. You need to find people that are sorry, that, that are excited about um, that are excited about the game. Sorry, should should I start over? That's no problem. That's no problem. <laughs> Turn off my my damn phone. That's no problem. Um, Please continue. Okay, so um, the so so the most important thing in my view uh, for organized play uh, is is that when people attend an event that to the maximum degree possible we all understand what we're playing okay that and that means unfortunately that we have to reduce significantly the amount of officially supported uh factors uh, okay and, and that there have been a lot you know i've, I've seen some of the what the fg put out was like there's like 9 10 11 12 different formats and some players of course have introduced uh, you know formats as well um so we are carefully reviewing what we think will be uh, the very best formats for how it will work in a tournament environment. Uh, in a tournament environment, um, there are going to be various various uh, constraints and restrictions as well, like time, uh, you know, is one. Uh, how decks are handled is another. Uh, and of course, what is what is a game that most closely represents what we feel is the spirit, uh, you know, of, of Keyforge. So there's going to be a lot of, of uh, probably some controversy about what we decide in the end is going to be the the. the the exact formats of, of tournament play, um, but we are we are landing on those very quickly here, and uh, we'll be able to make some announcements here in about a month about how the 2023 uh, organized play structure will work, what the format will be for the the main events and for the uh, for the nationals and the world championship. So we're excited about them. I would think they're going to be great, uh, but of course we can't please everyone. Um, so forgive us in advance if your favorite format was not in in, in those. Now that there is another important part of Keyforge, though, uh, which is also a, a form of organized play, and that is uh, more casual play, um, which could happen in clubs and stores uh, and, and so on. And those, I think, are you know in that kind of format. As long as you know everybody is already there and are you know invested in playing something and are willing to explore different things um because generally speaking it's a it's an environment of people that you know or you can invite and really introduce uh, to, to your particular play environment i think there's a lot of formats you can introduce on a league level and so we are going to try to support um officially via certain packages and, and um um and and certain concepts that we're going to be able to to give to to clubs and stores uh, by which they can actually have a more casual evening play and of course, that that introduces itself uh, in a way that's much more casual, and so therefore we people can play a lot more different formats. And so we have some fun ideas for how people can get together, you know, every other week or every week or what have you, and have a great kind of uh, time together that we can kind of support with with some fun artifacts and, and elements. Um, so so I want to sort of split off this idea of OP into the tournament format, which is which is a much more you know, restrictive and exciting format, um, you know, in many ways, but it's it's also more limited and more narrow. Um, whereas where we have the more casual OP, which we'll call leagues, uh, and I, we think we want to, you know, our current plans anyway, is that we want to try to support both of those aspects of the game. Maybe we're doing too much, but but ultimately, uh, Keyforge has a lot of strength in it, in its casual nature. Um, but if you want to push a casual nature game onto a uh, you know a competitive tournament environment, you you, you reach certain problems, uh, and so we have to make some some decisions for how to make them really clean and straightforward, and everybody feels like they're on board um, when they arrive at a strange place with meeting lots of people you've never met before. There has to be some very regulated forms of uh, of play, uh, and so that's what we're currently uh, honing in on. Legandomi alla domanda precedente, la peculiarità di Keyforge è la presenza dei suoi mazzi unici, che in passato ha segnato sia la croce che la delizia di questo gioco, dato che con l'arrivo del valore di Sass, un numero enorme di deck non ha neanche preso aria, essendo ancora imballati nelle loro coperture di cellofan. È prevista la promozione ufficiale di tornei Sass Cup, così da dare a tutti i mazzi presenti in gioco una chance di competere in eventi organizzati? In connection with the previous question, 
The main peculiarity of Keyforge is in its unique decks, which have been both a curse and a blessing for the game. Yes. As since the creation of the SAS score, Synergy Anti Synergy score, a huge number of decks uh, didn't have a chance to uh, breathe and it's still in their plastic film. Do you foresee official tournament with a SAS cap so that all existing deck may have a chance to compete in the organized play circuit? Um... I mean, uh, the, the SAS score is really interesting. Of course, it's not made by any of the official. It wasn't, you know, made by Fantasy Flight, nor is it, uh, is it made by us. Uh, and, and so we, I, I don't have a huge amount of insight into the, uh, you know, the underlying algorithms that go into that. Plus, I'm not sure how well that they have compared to actual tournaments. But um, that, that, that aside, um, there will always be some way to, I think, gauge, uh, give decks a score, whether it's, Keyforge or any sort of constructed deck, you, can, you could also score in certain ways. Um, that that said, I, I think you were kind of pointing to some of the problems of you know of Keyforge. It's a wonderful, cool game. We love it. Uh, you, you buy a deck right there, boom, you can actually play. But just due to the nature of how cards work together, uh, how things are come come together, even when we try to massage the parameters of how they how they work, there's going to be some some decks that are just more silly and goofy and others and maybe are, are, are better at certain things than others uh and that thing they may be good at may not be a specific kind of tournament play so then then what happens is you, you effectively have what you feel is a bad deck uh because those 36 cards you know came together so so that that problem and once you bought you know say 50 decks and you have 45 decks at home that are you, you consider it anyway bad of some kind you know that's not a good situation for anyone i mean we, we want you to be proud and happy with all your decks that you bought so um it is uh, uh, a, a one of the downsides to that really cool format of, of buying a deck and having it ready to go and nobody else has it um so those are those are really uh, a blessing and a curse we we are working on you know on a way that 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 uh, that would solve some of those uh, some of those issues were relative to to um, going back and looking at your old collection of decks and having them be more uh, uh, influential, more exciting in your future play. Uh, I, I don't want to speak exactly about how we're going to try to solve that, but but it is part of our organized play program. We do understand that there are really two main issues that I think Keyforge have to solve in some way or form, shape or form. Uh, one of them is the is the sense of um, you know, how, how, what do I do with decks that are considered by me or others not great? And two, what is the player agency uh, that, that is brought to the game? I, you know, i.e., there's the horse and the rider, like Richard Garfield used to say, where we have the rider is the, uh, you, know, you know, is the player and the, uh, and, you know, and the deck is the horse. Um, but uh, is, is, there, is there a way to enhance uh, player agency, you know, in, in the decisions of, 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 uh, of an organized play environment? Because if you care about SAS scores, then you're probably in the realm of tournament play, right? You, you care about having decks that are really good and, and are really interesting uh, on a tournament level. Uh, and so um, we have to try to find ways to solve the issue of, of, uh, of sort of the, the deck gradient uh, and also of the player agency. You know, how, how do I, as a player, feel like I can contribute to decisions that that's going to make make uh, um, it an exciting uh, tournament, um, and not just necessarily rely on on a, on a, on the score of the deck, if you will. There has to be a great rider and and a great horse. You know, it can't just be a great horse. It's, and so we need to find out how to uh, how to how to balance those going forward. I think we have some some very good. Uh, ways to do that now uh, and uh, like I said we're going to announce them soon. Parliamo ora della campagna di crowdfunding. Il suo arrivo sulla piattaforma GameFound ha suscitato un moto di supporto positivo per veder tornare il gioco sui tavoli che diversi non si aspettavano dato che almeno qui in Italia lo slogan il gioco è morto è diventato un modo di dire paragonabile al buona fortuna che si augura a chi deve impegnarsi in un qualcosa. Vi aspettavate tale supporto da parte della community mondiale? Let's talk now about the crowdfunding campaign. Sure. Its creation on GameFound platform excited a wave of positive support for the return of the game in our tables, which was unexpected for many people since, uh, at least here in Italy, the slogan The Game is Dead 
has become a common saying, uh, not unlike saying good luck to someone who is undertaking some task. Were you expecting this level of support from the work community? You know, honestly, no. I, um, we that was one of the big dilemmas of you know going into um, into this endeavor in the first place. We, we had some beneficial, positive, uh, you know, concepts in actually acquiring Keyforge from Fantasy Flight. Uh, but probably the main one being is that a lot of the team that was originally behind the game are now working uh, for me here at uh, Ghost Galaxy. Uh, the the other big aspect was that. Um, we had a sister company developing a software that was going to work on um, trying to help people create games that then could be digitally printed, which of course is something that the, the Keyforge, you know, you know, was was doing. Um, but the game had, you know, been through a very tough period of time. Uh, first of all, number one, any game after a few years have certain issues, uh, certain things that, that that concern the fan base. Just like you mentioned uh, before in your previous question relating to agency and, you know, and deck attrition. Um, but we, we frankly did not have, we don't have any good sense, good understanding about where is the player base after a year and a half of, you know, silence and confusion uh, related to the state of the game uh, and also a pandemic uh, that, that, you know, reduced all of the, the get togetherness uh, that's so important to, to, to card games, uh, physical card games they had all gone away we just we just didn't know what the you know if if the player base was still around and how excited they were and how committed they are um I, i've published many many games over my career and um trying to relaunch a game that has you know been failed or has been sidelined for whatever reason is usually a a, a very very tough a very very um risky proposition it's like i i've likened it to having to try to catch a falling knife um you can catch it uh but the chances are that uh, that uh, you you will either miss get the blade or that will hit your foot uh and and so uh it's a um it is a risky endeavor and we ultimately it comes down to to the players and the fans you know can can we uh are they out there are they still interested are they still willing to spend money and on, on on this game and, and get together and, and foster a community for it um we hope so and uh frankly we didn't 100 quite know what to expect because the, the, the data on terms of sales and tournaments of course has disappeared uh, over the pandemic so um in order to to really gauge that in a really practical way which means that you know, not only how many people are interested but how many people are willing to spend money on it you know those are two critical factors for for wanting to be a publisher for any one game uh, we think that the uh, that the crowdfunding was was really the very best way of, of actually gauging that. Uh, that's an ecosystem. I, I have never done a crowdfunding campaign before in my life. Uh, never been involved um, in that until now. Uh, it's sort of an ecosystem that grew up while I was publishing a sort of a standard games publishing and distributing it to shops and so on. Um, but I do believe it has some very strong attributes, and one of them is exactly this. You know, it allows us as a publisher to reach out to the fans. Uh, and, and for the fans to, you know, talk to us, you know, via the message boards and also via, via their dollars is what we're providing. Uh, is, it, is that still valid? Um, and, and so it's it's uh, when we went to Gen Con um, and presented Keyforge, uh, we didn't quite know what to expect. Uh, we didn't we knew there were some excited people and we would love and look forward to meeting them. But we just didn't know. You know, it was, we were going to be quiet, or was it going to be busy? And, and fortunately, you know, knock on wood here, it was very, very busy. Uh, we were very excited. There were you know, hundreds of fans that, that came and introduced themselves. We, uh, we had these uh, um, Keyforge adventurers uh, for, for sale, and we sold out of every single one by the second day. Um, and we were just so delighted to, to talk to everybody. We did lots of demos for, for new players, and we had existing players come up and, uh, and talk to us, you know, about all of their experiences with the game and how they 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 loved it uh, of course many thought it was dead and so they were surprised to see it and excited to see it um and and so um we were very positively surprised of course this is what we hoped for you know when we took on this game we had hoped that there there, there will be uh, a fan base and we put a lot of work in the last three or four months uh, investing in, in in the game and it's the software and uh of course, moving it forward. So we very, very much hope that the that the audience out there is is, is thriving as big as we uh, um, as we hope, um, or, or as it could be. So, I mean, 
as of right now, for example, we have like 8,600 followers on the uh, on the preview page for our for the campaign, which is very exciting. You know, we didn't had no really no concept about how many how many could that be, but that is certainly a, a great amount. Uh, and so we, we can't wait to show all those those people and as well as anybody else who wants to come see the campaign, what we have in store here in a couple of days. Quale sarà l'obiettivo finale quando la campagna fondi raggiungerà il minimo necessario per darvi la possibilità di investire il capitale raccolto? What will be the final goal once the campaign reaches the minimum level needed to allow you to invest the capital gathered? Well, obviously, if we reach, uh, if there's a successful campaign, uh, we, we have, uh, you know, we'll be very excited, for, first of all, um, uh, and uh, we'll have a lot of positive aspects to this. First of all, hopefully we'll have thousands of, of Keyforge fans that have uh, invested and will now be able to communicate with uh, now and in the future. Um, we'll, of course, have the resources also to, to, to proceed uh, as quickly as possible with the actual manufacturing of the, uh, the Winds of Exchange set. Uh, and, uh, you know, we are also making rapid progress now, um, but it will help, uh, help us with, with the finalization of the software engine uh, that, that we need in order to actually make the decks. That, that is the, the strange thing about this this uh this game is that you cannot make you know most games you you make the stuff and you just print more and more and more you say go back and, and you print the same of course this game every single deck is born if you will inside this mother of a software um and uh you know it's not just when you have a software like that it's not just the the algorithm which is basically a series of you know processes and and, and digits and various levers and and rules that we can set Uh, it's also the whole system of, of actually uploading the data and uploading uh, the actual cards and having the design team have the ability to interface with, uh, with all those elements and make adjustments. And of course, there's the algorithm itself. Uh, and then there is, a, which also quite complex, is the actual um, rendering, which means that once the, the mathematical data has been gathered for a deck and it's validated, which means that it's, it follows all the rules we want and it's unique, etc. Uh, then it has to be rendered, which means that a, um, a large server has to now gather all the graphics and the high resolution graphics and put these all together with the right fronts, the right backs, the correct, you know, mutations, uh, enhancements, etc. Uh, regardless of uh, whatever is, is on the on the decks. And then, of course, they then have to be rendered into something that can be printed And produced so so this this when i said we say the software it's not just like you know the 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 logic you know in in the middle that generates it it's it's the whole suite of things that are required for for the pipeline so that that will uh, we will continue to work on that uh but we have made made very strong progress uh in the last three months and so we're excited to to potentially um have some good news about that shortly um But of course, it just uh, one thing I know that, that we will do is that it, it, once we have the, the, the confidence that, that Keyforge is back, uh, then we are going to be, you know, starting a lot of different, uh, you, know, you know, simultaneously starting a lot of different efforts. Like I mentioned earlier, the organized play program is, is going to be very important to us. Um, we also need to start uh, development of the next set, set seven and probably set eight. Uh, these things take a long time to develop. They need hundreds and hundreds of pieces of artwork. We have to make sure that we have a playtest network set up. So we will be hiring people uh, to bring on board for the design uh, and for the administration of all these things, um, whether it's organized play, uh, the product development, uh, a playtester, wrangling, and uh, et cetera. Um, so there'll be a lot of activity here. Um, and of course, this will all be blended in with the manufacturing and the, uh, the crowd field uh, the crowdfunding fulfillment uh, that's going to go through through GameFound. But uh, uh, we actually are going to be manufacturing uh, Keyforge right here in Roseville in the U.S. Um, so I'm very excited about that. We have um, all of the, the really high-end machines, the exact same production equipment uh, that was used uh, to, to make any every, every other set of Keyforge has been made in these exact specifications of uh, machines. So um, we'll be able to, uh, to, to make them and be very responsive from a manufacturing perspective. And so I hope that's going to be something that uh, everybody will appreciate that we can get stuff out in a more reliable and, you know, and fast way and, and do fun things like we were doing with, uh, the, in, the, in the campaign. Uh, there will be certain levels where you can, uh, we'll be able to make your, put your own name 
uh, you know, out there, and we will take whatever name that is you give us, and that will be rolled into the naming title uh, algorithm. So, so, uh, so, Marco, uh, if you want your name, uh, you know, in there in one of those decks, uh, you put it in there, and uh, we'll have some fun uh, archon name Marco something. Um, and uh, so, those are all things that that uh, that needs to happen. Um, so it's. You know, there's there's no shortage of, of things that need investment. Uh, once once we are you know completely happy that, that this is going to be a go. Parliamo ora per l'appunto dell'algoritmo. Tutti gli appassionati e anche i non appassionati del gioco conoscono la storia della rottura di questo strumento così fondamentale per la creazione degli unici. Posso chiederle di spendere due parole al riguardo in modo tale da far star tranquilla l'intera community mondiale sul fatto che questo incidente non si ripeterà più, costringendo quindi Keyforge ad un secondo stop? Let's talk about the algorithm. All fans of the game, and even those who are not, know about the story of the breakage of this fundamental tool for the creation of the unique decks. May I ask you to tell us something about it so uh, that the whole war community can be reassured that such an accident like uh, will never happen again or force Keyforge to another stop? Well, I mean, uh, never say never. Uh, you know, there, no, there's no software made in, on the planet that's not vulnerable in some way, but uh, obviously uh, uh, we, we look at, at the past and, and uh, We are sort of horrified by the loss of, of this uh, of this software. Um, so, in terms of you know, will the software we're building uh, be be protected? Uh, yes, uh, yes, it will, and and uh, we're going to try to do a, you know a great job with it. Um, you know, we're going to be using all of the uh, we have a, a, a wonderful um, team of IT people here at the, the other sister company that that's building uh, the software for us. Uh, and so I have, I have great confidence that that, uh, that this will not uh, not disappear. However, I, of course, I would, of course, have told you this, you know, four years ago at FFG, uh, if you asked me the same question. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, there was a really uh, tragic uh, issue there that, that caused that software to be lost. Um, and uh, I, I, I can't believe how painful that must have been and, and how disruptive it, it's obviously been to, to uh, Fantasy Flight Games as a publisher and to the audience. Um, And so certainly we, uh, we, we don't want that history to repeat itself, um, but we, we should not have the same, at least the same vulnerability that uh, uh, that was the case in, in the, uh, for the old software. Con Winds of Exchange eh, abbiamo visto il ritorno di Marte e la comparsa della undicesima casa presente sul crogiolo, ovvero i Compact of Equidon. Mancano all'appello quindi gli ispirati e gli Skyborn. Visti unicamente nel manuale del gioco di ruolo I segreti del crogiolo, l'RPG dell'universo Genesis. Potrebbe magari anticiparci qualcosa sui prossimi set, dandoci qualche notizia al riguardo, tipo se vedremo solcare i cieli dal Barone Rosso presto o tardi? In Winds of Exchange we saw Mars return, finally as well as the appearance of the 11th house of the Crucible, that is the Compact of Equidon. So, we are still missing the Inspired and the Skyborn, so far only seen in the manual of Secret of the Crucible, the RPG belonging to the Genesis universe. Can mm -hmm. you maybe tell us something about future sets and give us some news about them? such as uh, we will see the red baron soar in the sky sooner or later so um obviously uh, we're excited uh, that to own uh, this property and and uh, it's not just the, the keyforge game we actually acquired the whole property of the crucible the characters the story the artwork etc uh and so uh, I, i think we're you know excited to show people uh the that world in different ways um and uh But, but, but one thing, uh, I'm going to be uh, sort of a boring uh, in interviewee, I guess, because one of the, the, the answers I always have uh, when asked about future products is, is no comment, uh, you, you know, the, the, uh, for, for, for a lot of good reasons, uh, but, but we certainly have exciting plans. I'm, uh, I'm quite uh, excited about what, what the set is going to be after, after this. Uh, I can tell you that there is going to be a new house, and I can tell you it's not one of those two. 
Um, but but uh, obviously, as we uh, as, as Keyforge now, I hope you agree, Marco. The Keyforge should now be a game that lasts for twenty years or longer. Uh, we're going to need to, to introduce characters and content and houses and mechanics and and uh, lots of rich fun things. Uh, and, and so, obviously, uh, digging into that pot of the of the universe that's already been established is something that would be silly of us not to do. Ultima domanda per salutarci. Qual è la sua casa preferita e perché proprio quella? One last question before we part. Which is your favorite house and why? It's a good question. It's a good question. Um, my favorite house, I know I have I have I have several, uh, but I, I i must say it's it's probably mars uh simply because i i like those you know grumpy green men and and uh the fact that they even exist in the first place because that was definitely not a house that that uh was a rich i mean there's something that it's actually a house that richard wanted he wanted martians in the game for some reason and we we couldn't why are martians going to be in this game it's <laughs> you know this is going to be about this fantasy place out in the middle of nowhere and you want martians you know and uh but it they turned out really well and and i think it was it was uh it was really fun to sort of see them in there and uh i i, I guess i just like uh, I, i just like playing with them i was sad to see them disappear for a while um and, and i think they are a house that have you know haters uh, you know and lovers uh, but, but so i think i would say how's mars and of course i've now have been able to work on a lot of content now uh the last couple of months for the all, all the new houses and so it's been uh, been fun to see some of the some of the mars stuff you know come back and there's a lot of really fun i think uh fun illustrations and uh and story details about mars this time Grazie ancora a Mr. Pedersen per aver risposto in modo chiaro ed esaustivo ad ogni domanda che gli è stata fatta in questa intervista. Thanks again Mr. Pedersen for clearly and comprehensively answering every question asked to you in this interview. Uh, you're welcome Marco and thanks to you for being a, such a strong advocate for Keyforge and thanks to all the Italian Keyforge players. Uh, you guys are one of the biggest communities in the world and uh, we hope to bring more to you. Prima di salutarci, volevo ricordarvi di supportare la campagna di crowdfunding per il rilancio di Keyforge. Come sempre troverete tutti i riferimenti in descrizione, cliccando inoltre qui in alto troverete il contenuto dove vi ho parlato in un video flash di ogni singolo pacchetto disponibile. Quindi preparatevi perché la raccolta fondi inizierà il 9 di settembre. Before saying goodbye, I want to remind you to support the crowdfunding campaign for the relaunch of Keyforge. As always, you will find the reference in the description. By clicking here above, you will also find the content where I spoke to you in a flash video of every single package available. So, get ready, the fundraiser starts on September 9. Signor Pedersen, grazie infinite ancora per essere stato in nostra compagnia. Thank you, Mr. Pedersen, to be with us. You're welcome. Signori, noi ci vediamo in un prossimo video. Mi raccomando, ricordatevi di iscrivervi al canale, di lasciare un like o un dislike se il video non dovesse esservi piaciuto. Ci vediamo al prossimo video.